the six dragons asks, what if the surfaces are generated at, at runtime two? Shouldn't be a problem. Just add them to the array when they're generated, and then you'll be able to bake them the same way. You may need to configure their variables, but you can do that by script. Uh, you need 5.6 or later. I'm using 2017.1, but you can use 5.6. Pseudoman asks, do you know when this stuff will be implemented directly to Unity? No, I don't. Um, there's a kind of a shift that's happened about the way we're deploying stuff like this. Uh, I mean, it's worth noting, right, the API is directly in Unity, and these are just components written against the API, right? So kind of the underlying tech is in the engine, and these are really just scripts that you could have written yourself that are, uh, you know, that are provided as components. So take from that what you want. But basically, we're in a process right now of modularizing the engine. And there's some pretty big changes to the way that's going to work coming, uh, including a thing called a package manager, uh, which is going to basically kind of allow you to load certain parts of the engine and not others, which I think is going to be very useful, especially for people doing things like mobile games where they may not need a whole 3D physics engine or whatever it is. So uh, that is coming and that is kind of changing the way we do some of our development. And so as a result, certain projects are existing and updating separately uh, in GitHub mostly. Um, and that is... Uh, a great place to look to to see the latest. So the navigation stuff, the new image uh, image effects post processing stack, is uh, happening in GitHub now, um, and there's some awesome stuff there that uh, you know if you're kind of want to keep up on the very latest of these features, you can get it as it get it as it happens. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the way we're going for now. But I think there will be a time where this stuff kind of flows back into the engine. But when that will be, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I feel like it's better to have it available via GitHub than just like sitting in some internal branch at Unity. Sirius Wolf asks, so if an agent can't get to the location it's been sent to, will it run against the nearest wall or will it simply not move? It will uh, move to the edge. It will move as close as it can and then stop. It'll move usually like to the edge of the nav mesh and then stop. Bob Sign asks, do you have any tips to build procedural generators and keep, keep the nav mesh baked? Um... Well, I hope that what I showed here was maybe useful in that regard. Basically, it, it, you know, procedural generation is an incredibly varied approach to content creation, right? So you might be generating your whole level on startup and then it's effectively static from there. You might be doing something more dynamic that's destructible or user editable. Um, so it's a little hard to say, but basically it is possible within obviously the constraints of your performance budget, which is an important consideration, but it is possible to simply rebake everything whenever the user makes a change to the level or the generator makes a change to the level, right? You just might want to make sure you can afford that with everything else that's going on in your game. I would say if you're thinking about doing something procedural or destructible or whatever that uses nav mesh, I would build that in very early uh, to make sure you can afford it uh, performance budget wise. Night Owl Game Dev. Oh, that's a good question. I keep hearing that this is supposed to work with 2D, but haven't had any luck with getting it to work. Is it supposed to work with 2D components, sprite renders, and 2D colliders? No. No, it's not. Uh, not currently supported for 2D colliders. What you'll need to do is have proxy 3D objects in your scene, which is not that hard to do, although a little bit hackish, but yes. And uh, then bake your nav mesh based on that, and then move your agents... Uh, based on the 3D colliders as opposed to the 2D colliders. Lindy H, yes, you can use behavior trees with it for sure. Those are two kind of separate things. Uh, Bob Sign, yeah, I have tested the local nav mesh builder for procedural generation. The only downside to it is that it doesn't support uh, walking on walls and ceilings, um, which is why I decided to focus on this approach instead of that for the training because I felt like the nav mesh surface um, provided the most flexibility, but, uh, here I'll pull one of the scripts back up. So we're not just looking at the GitHub page. Um, so, but you could really not with a lot of difficulty, cr write a script that would just gather nearby nav mesh surfaces and bake those as you walked around, 
Uh, local nav mesh builder, I would say, is best for larger levels and levels that, well, maybe not larger levels, but but basically areas where it's important that you're baking an area and that you don't need to do uh, walking on walls or ceilings. But it makes a lot of sense for larger levels, right? So you don't bake this whole huge thing. Local nav mesh builder is in the GitHub. There's an example scene for it. Yeah, as uh, Endarin says. Kafra Software says, I want to make a level of spiders. I want the spider agents to walk on the webs and the other agents to consider the webs obstacles. How do I do this? Uh, you would do that by probably the easiest way to do that would be with multiple surfaces, I would think. So you would have the a surface baked onto the webs that the spiders would be on, and then you would not include the spiders in the other agents' uh, meshes. Now, how they would respond to those as obstacles um, is a question, but you could do some stuff with layers and turning off collision for certain things. It, it's, I don't have a really clean answer for that, but it's definitely possible. Uh, Alpha Soldier says, so I'm really curious if this is the way to create a nav mesh for randomly generated chunk-based world with the links to link in between chunks. Alpha Soldier, I would look at the local nav mesh builder before I decided to do a chunk-based solution uh, because the local nav mesh builder will just build an, age, uh, uh, an area in a distance around your, probably around your player. So you can say, build 100 meters around me, and then that kind of, basically the nav mesh follows them around. And that is probably better than baking lots and lots of chunks and then linking between them. That is my guess. But with the caveat that that out of the box does not support walking on walls. Uh, whoa, Roby. Asks in a destructible level setup, your name is crazy, bro. In a destructible level setup, do you need to regenerate the entire nav mesh? Um, look at the local nav mesh builder, as I mentioned earlier, in the GitHub uh, repo. That's probably going to be your best bet for that. It'll just generate in an area around the player. J. Marshall Pittman, yes, you still have nav mesh obstacles. Uh, they're now nav mesh modifiers is what they're called. All the old stuff is still there, but I think the new stuff is generally better. Uh, yes, it can be used with terrains. But yeah, check out the GitHub stuff. There's a lot of great stuff there. Also check out Mike Geig's short 30-minute talk on, it's called Finding the Path. It's on YouTube from Unite 2017, just a couple of weeks ago. That's got a nice quick overview of the navigation stuff. Some Definitely some overlap with what I showed today. Um, all right, cool. So things seem to be quieting down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off the mic, uh, and then I will answer further questions via typing. Thanks, and Darren. Thanks for helping out with some of those questions in the chat. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to receive updates about when these things are coming out as well, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Matt Mirrorfish. We also have at the Ant Ranch, which is Adam Buckner, who's part of my team, at Will Goldstone, who's a uh, product manager, and at Mike Geig, who is an evangelist. And they're all folks who have been involved at different times with live training. I'm the primary on it now, um, and I usually announce it on my Twitter when I'm often not, not too far in advance, but uh, you can also check the schedule. Thanks. Thanks, all. Appreciate it. All right, I'm going to cut the mic. I will respond to questions by typing. Thanks again. Everybody have a good summer. I'll be back uh, in September, back to school with live training. Should be a lot of fun, and I will see you then. Bye.